Christ has sent his disciples with the good news to the world. We do not have to have it all together, but we do have to all be in it together. This is the challenge and has been for churches, even the early church. When the church at Corinth eventually resolved their differences, it was enough to pass down their experience through the letter which bears its name. For us to learn, we will learn, yes, indeed, as we ponder on the theme, be perfectly united in Christ, found in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, from verse 10 to 18. And I read. I appeal to you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another, so that there may be no division among you, and that you may be perfectly united in mind and thoughts. My brothers, some from Cleo's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this. One of you say, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas. Still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized into the name of Paul? I am thankful that I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius. So no one can say that you were baptized into my name. Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanas. Beyond that, I don't remember if I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with words of human wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For this message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the intelligence of the intelligent, I will frustrate. Being perfectly united in Christ is possible by the grace of God. It is only possible if we use humble words. It is possible if we love each other. It is possible only if we share the goodness of the coming of Christ in the human form, in loving ways, and together. In the church, we have to stop being divided over matters that just don't matter. We have to get on with sharing the good news in loving ways that lift up Jesus, the one who truly matters. We have to know the good news in order to share it. The cross of Jesus transforms the value of our actions and status. Because of the cross of Christ, we must learn to view the world differently. The gospel changes the way we think about ourselves, think about life, and everything else about the world. We cannot assume to have the correct world view. We cannot think that our point of view is the right point of view, and everyone else's point of view is wrong. We will never be of the same mind until we come humbly to the scriptures and allow the gospel message change what we know and believe. We cannot have an attitude that does not care what the scriptures teach and that we will continue to think and believe the way we do. Our approach to the word of God must be one that is expecting to learn from God's word, knowing that we are darkened in our understanding and need 
the light of the gospel to us. If we are to be perfectly united in Christ, then we must be together where there are opportunities to share our understanding of the scriptures. We cannot be of the same mind if we do not know where our thinking is. We cannot speak the things of God if we are not together it's speaking to God. each other. Every church fellowship is so crucially important. Bible study class, prayer meetings, choir practice, Sunday worship, fellowship meetings, church council, and the curriculum classes. The goal of church fellowships is not for the pastor or chairman to teach of what he thinks, but for us to teach each other and learn from each other. We should place high priority on getting together at every possible opportunity that we might grow together in faith. This also challenges the government of our nation to develop a culture of peace and comfort for people to gather, not in fear, to share the scripture for their growth in the faith in Christ Jesus. We are nothing and Christ is everything. Perfect unity in Christ comes only when we are centered on Christ alone, not on others. Humans must never make much of themselves. When we participate in the story of Christ and of his cross, a narrative in which all that we think we know about the world, its value, its knowledge, its wisdom, its virtue, is configured by God's great act of salvation in Christ. And we grow in faith. The message of the cross is not something that only applies to entering the people of God. It gives shape to the entirety of our life together. St. Paul calls us to live up to our identity in Christ. In particular, he calls us to perfect unity in Christ. He appeals to us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ as the only name that can make one. We were all baptized into the name of Jesus. Any other name is a party name and has a party spirit. Cleo had his people and all their knowledge and power revolved around his embodiment. So, with other teachers and their people, the Apollos group, because their leader was an eloquent man and very powerful in public debate, with such rhetorical force, in him, people formed a rallying point for his party. Our self-interest should not separate us from our baptism and the cross of Jesus Christ. Christ's own crucifixion saves us. And our baptism into his name makes us his people, which also signifies a people of the cross. If we act as though anything else or anyone else defines who we are, then we deny the story of our salvation. In all we do, glory should belong to our Lord Jesus Christ. We should believe that in our baptism, our sins were washed away. When the waters of baptism were applied in the name of the Holy Trinity, the power of our faith in Jesus Christ, not in any other name, nothing therefore should get in the way of showing the power of the cross. In all we do, there must be no distraction from the word of God. We want to see Jesus in his full glory and our eyes not taken away from the cross because of any person standing in front of you. It is about the substance, not the show. Let us pray. 
O Lord our God. We are to be Christians walking together in our congregations with the same mind and judgment. The primary way we can fight against divisions is to remember that the gospel is not about us, but about Christ and the power of his cross as we strive to work and worship together for the glory of God. Amen. Thank you.